Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mikolas and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are taking a look at a queer young adult contemporary small town fantasy originally published as a webcomic graphic novel, Mooncakes, written by Suzanne Walker and illustrated by Wendy Zhu published in 2019 by Roar. And like how I say every time I run into this particular situation, I'm not an expert on content warnings, but I would say this is pretty safe book on all fronts. Well, unless you're homophobic. Apparently aimed at young adults, there's certainly nothing really stopping anyone of any age picking this up if they are intrigued. Learning more about the writer, Suzanne Walker, I was not surprised to find out that she has, quote, spoken at numerous conventions on topics from disability representation in sci-fi slash fantasy to the importance of fair compensation for marginalized FFF creators. End quote, as this is clearly at work in Mooncakes, which has an ease of disability representation that I rarely, if ever, see in our currently still very ableist creative landscape. Wendy Zhu is a, quote, Brooklyn-based illustrator and comic artist. Her work has been featured at Catapult, Barnes & Noble Sci-Fi and Fantasy Blog, and Tor.com, among other places. End quote. Flipping over the book, there's blurbs from some of my favorites, including Tilly Walden and Katie O'Neill, and the following plot synopsis. Quote, a story of love and demons, family and witchcraft. Nova Hong knows more about magic than your average teenage witch. She works at her grandmother's bookshop where she helps them loan out spell books and investigate any supernatural occurrences in their New England town. One fateful night, she follows reports of a white wolf into the woods, and she comes across the unexpected. Her childhood crush, Tam Lang, battling a horse demon in the woods. As a werewolf, Tam has been wandering from place to place for years, unable to call any town home. Pursued by dark forces eager to claim the magic of wolves and out of options, Tam turns to Nova for help. Their latent feelings are rekindled against the backdrop of witchcraft, untested magic, occult rituals, and family ties. Both new and old in this enchanted tale of self-discovery. End quote. Clearly, for better or for worse, a webcomic, this will likely divide people as to the quality of the artwork. In my opinion, the only real weaknesses weakness was the mouths, which just look odd and underdeveloped. Um, not having followed the development of Mooncakes as a webcomic, I'm not sure how much effect it might have had on the pacing of the story. Was everything planned out ahead of time? The ways that webcomics generally publish, I do think, leads to a drastically different sort of pacing than a regular comic, which is itself structured very differently from something that's initially released in a full graphic novel. I feel like things might have been a bit more streamlined if this had been published straight to the print edition, but that might just be putting too much of my ideas of what a good graphic novel is onto these people who are not me. Diving into the intersectionalities of it all, while it's not a real part of the plotline, a lot of diversity is integrated seamlessly, including race, gender outside of the binary, sexuality, and don't I don't get to say this often, even disability representation. The story itself is pretty quiet though, the action isn't decompressed at all, and I feel like it's pretty cozy, really? Question mark. Small town vibes, coming of age, finding home, finding love, plus a lot of solid elder rep. I can definitely see why this book is so popular. I'm rating this title 4 out of 5 stars because I do value the ways that different points of diversity were presented and I feel like that is something that a lot of people, myself included, could learn a lot from. Bye all, keep reading, and resist white supremacy. And as always, Literally Graphic is recorded on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. I live here because of British colonization, indigenous genocide, and more geographically specific, Treaty 13. 
also known as the Toronto Purchase, which was finalized in 1805 between representatives of the Crown and certain Mississauga peoples. This treaty was a lie and has since been broken many times over. Saying so reflects only my own small steps towards knowing the truth and does nothing for reconciliation.